so much more than a feeling, man. I, I, I'm telling you, um, it, it, it's funny because we're, we're wired um, to feel. But when you can believe God past feeling, oh, man, that, that's, that's the place that you got to get to. Um, you, you know, as pastor, you sit and you talk to people all the time. And the first thing you hear is, Pastor, well, I feel. And if you could just get past how you feel. See, see, there's there's stages of faith, right? There's this um, intellectual faith where we come to this place where we know. Turn me up just a little bit, just a little bit. There's this place where we come to where we know <clears throat> that God exists. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit and a lot. We come to this place to where we know God exists. And then we, we, we have to do something about it, which is emotional faith. We have, to, we have to move forward and respond to what God tells us to do. But then there's this place sometimes where you can't feel him, where you can't touch him, where you can't locate him. And you got it. Now, now you have to operate on what you already know about God. Because if you don't operate based on what you already know about God, you'll begin to operate based on how you feel. And if you operate based on how you feel, your feelings will always lie to you. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Feelings are always geared towards sin. Uh, the flesh is geared towards sin. And so even when we sometimes equate something to be a good thing, it still can be sinful. You, you know what I mean? Even when we equate some things to be, uh, uh, to bring us happiness that are outside the will of God, it is still sinful, right? And so, and so we have to make sure that we operate in the will of God because as we operate in the will of God, sometimes, most of the time it's not about, how, about your feelings at all. It's about what you already know about God. And so, and so God makes sure that if we dwell in his word richly, that the word of God will sustain us and that it will hold us and keep us from falling into how we feel instead of what we know. Amen? Because, because a couple weeks ago we, when we read 2 Peter, it said grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge. Right? Sometimes you want to feel peaceful, right? You just want to, you just want to, man, it's just a nice day. The breeze was out and, and it, it wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It was just right. Nothing went wrong. I had so much peace. Well, what about when everything goes wrong and it, shouldn't you have the same amount of peace? See, see, we equate peace based on how we feel and not about what we know because it don't have to, it doesn't have to go right at all. Right. For me to, to understand that that he is the prince of peace. And if he is the prince of peace and I've been sanctified in him and I only live inside of Christ, then as he is, so am I in, in the earth. Right. As he is in heaven, so am I in the earth. So it's not based on how I feel. It's based on what I know, because if I operate based on what I know, when my feelings ain't right, what I know will take me a lot farther than what my feelings do, because my feelings sometimes will hinder my life when God wants me to move forward. And we don't move forward because based on how we feel. Amen. And so, so you got to make sure, you got to make sure that when you operate, you operate based on what you know. If we would just do what we already know, listen, you don't have to know the Bible front and back. You don't have to be able to be a scholar. All you need to know is what you already know about Jesus Christ. If you do it, life will be better. I guarantee it. Whatever, whatever you know, on whatever level, on whatever scale you know about Christ, if you just live that way, I guarantee your life gets better. Who's in agreement with me? Oh, y'all in agreement with me. Okay, well, praise the Lord. Then, then that means that life's going to get better, amen? See, 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 because last week we found out that we need to respond quickly, right? That's what we found out last week, that we need to respond quickly. So if, if we already know something about God, then how we respond to it will make sure how it's manifested in our life. So if we already know that if without what I already know, if I apply to my life, then my life will get better. We, are, we were all in agreement with that, right? So now how you respond to it, how you respond to it, will, will be able, that, will, that very thing that you know will then manifest in your life. Who doesn't want, it, want manifested glory from God? See, see, because, because check this out. You don't want it? See, I'll be setting them up, don't I? I'll be setting them up. It's like, it's like we know something, and then 
Okay, okay, okay. Who knows to take a shower every day? Have you ever missed a day? Huh? Okay, you missed a day. Have you ever missed two days? You had, yes, you have. Yeah, okay. Look, when I, when I was in prison, right, I didn't want to go in the showers when I first got there because they weren't single showers, right? You know, I ain't never been to prison before, so, you know, you, you, you hear all the stories and everything, right? What? You hear all the stories about what might go down in prison, right? So I stayed, I, I was in the cell by myself. So I, I stayed in the cell for about five days. I tried to wash in the sink, but, you know, after a while, it just, that just don't work no more. You need to get in the shower. So I walked to the shower, and dudes was taking showers in their boxes. If, if, if I, if I would have just went and seen, right, then I would have known. I might not have been sitting in the cell funky for five days. Charge it to the past, D. Charge it to the past. Charge it to the old man. Can we talk about the old man sometime? You know, it's funny. Me and Teresa was coming to church this morning, and this song I had never heard, he said, he said, check this out. It was a song to the younger me, right? I don't know if y'all ever heard it. But he said, what the younger me carried was never supposed to be carried beyond the cross. Some of us are carrying things from our past beyond the cross. We have come to the cross. The cross is supposed to transform us, but we, we go beyond the cross and carry things from the younger us because it has burdened us and made us feel a certain kind of way, right? But, but if you just operate based on what you know, right, instead of what you feel, then what's, what's supposed to be left at the cross would be left at the cross, and you can operate in this new cre creation that Christ has made you to be. Amen? Amen. So, so, so we were talking about the, this faith, this, this, this essential faith, this practical faith. And, and, you know, last week I told you we were talking about um, before that a God-centered life. And, 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 you know, God said to me, well, how can they center me if they don't know how to operate within me, right? And so, and so as, I, as I began to study, I realized that in order to operate in this grace that we were talking about, you got to have faith. You got to know something about God. And as a matter of fact, you have to believe something about God. Because if you, if you just know and don't act on it, then, you, then it's just head knowledge. And head knowledge is not necessarily what's going to manifest what God has already slated for you. There are some things that have already been given to you, right? The Bible says that all things pertaining to life and godliness have been given to us. All things. But if we don't know how to, 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 to uh, grab what's in the unseen, right? In, in the unseen to the seen, how can we know that God has slated some things for us based on what? If you, if you keep praying for something and never saw it, how do you know that you have it? Faith. By faith. That's the church answer. Right? That's the church answer. Do you really feel that way about everything in your life? You, you see what I'm saying? You don't feel? Who said no? Who's truthful? You don't really feel that way about everything in your life. You know why? Because we, we stay in hope and not in faith. You see what I'm saying? Because hope is wishing for a thing. Right? Hope is wishing for a thing. You might as well say abracadabra at the end of your prayers, at the beginning of your prayers, because, because, because you're wishing, you're hoping for it, right? So check it out. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Who has a best friend? Okay, do you need to see your best friend to know anything about them? Right? Uh, okay, so, so there's some things that someone, there's some things that someone can come and tell you about your best friend, right? That don't line up with who they are, and you be like, I don't know, that don't sound like them. Right? You wasn't even there, but you can't be convinced because you are assured about who they are, right? So, so there's some things about Jesus, even though none of us have seen them, that, that come across our table and we be like, no, this can't be God. 
But then there's some other things that come across our table that we don't line up with and we should be lining up with because we're wishing for something and hoping for something. And because man needs to see the finished product, we don't believe what we can't see. We only believe what we can see, right? But see, check this out. None of us have ever seen Jesus, have you? In a dream? I've seen him in a dream with them pictures show me, right? That's what, the head, that's what his head looked like, what the pictures say, right? But have anyone seen Jesus? No. But based on the fact that you believe lets me know that you have some assurance, some confirmation, and some title thief of things that you hope for. Who wants to see Jesus? Okay, so because you want to see Jesus, is this based on the fact that you actually believe that he lives or that you don't want to go to hell? That's a deep question, right? Things that make you go. See, see, but until you begin to operate by faith, you'll never have any manifestations, spiritual manifestations in your life. You'll be wishing for Christ. And, and, and listen, this is the great thing. This is the great thing about God. He's so merciful. He'll work with that. But you'll never see manifestations of God until you actually believe that he exists. Until you really, really believe that he exists. And then that goes from struggle and strain to peace and joy. You see what I'm saying? Because, because manifested peace and joy can only come by faith. Not because conditions are right. Not because the weather was right. Not because the wind blew a specific way, but because we believe that God is and beside thee there is no other. See, see, this is where this is where this assurance, the confirmation and the title deed of things hoped for being proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So check this out. Faith is the proof for our hopes. Faith is the proof for our hopes. You know, some things just make your day, boy. I ain't lying. Some things just make your day. My man, you just make my day just now. My man, why? So, 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 so check this out. I'm hoping for something, right? I'm hoping for something. And it, it, it's, it's, it's not conviction yet. I, I still don't believe that it's coming, right? And when I don't believe that it's coming, I start asking for your opinion. Do you think... That if I do X, Y, and Z, that God will? Do you think that if I act this way, that God will do? See, I start acting for, uh, asking for opinions. I start fishing, right? I'm starting to look for something because I'm wishing for it to happen. I think that I'm operating in faith, but when I'm operating in faith, I don't need your confirmation. I got God's confirmation. And when I got God's confirmation, I don't need your two cents whether I'm doing something right or not because God didn't operate by saving me whether I was good because Christ died for the ungodly. And if he died for the ungodly, did, did I need your opinion to get saved? No, I didn't. So the same way that he saved me is the same way that he manifests himself in my life. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times we think that someone's more spiritual or more connected to God than we are. So we'll go to them asking them their opinion of something. Am I doing this right? How do I do this? What should I do? How do I operate in this? And it's good to get godly counsel. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm telling you is a lot of times you're not believing because some of us know more than what we operate in. And so if we would just operate in what we already know, we'd already have more manifestations. But what happens is that we get weary and well-doing and we begin to faint because we don't see that what we ask for. See, there are people home right now from church around the world that are depressed and they're staying home, balled up in a dark room because they've asked God to take depression from them. They've asked God to take depression from them, and because they've operated in depression for years, they've stayed home away from fellowship, away from iron sharpens. Now listen, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron and lifts the countenance of another, right? The person that's depressed, their countenance is low, right? Their, 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 their life is low. And so fellowship is, is designed to bring up the countenance, right? And so now, and so now, because they don't see proof 
of depression being removed, they stay home and start and start worshiping the bottle of pills more than they worship the one who is able to heal them. Come on, next slide. So now faith, King James, the other one was amplified. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? So, so hope comes before faith. It's okay to hope. I hope. I hope I get $10 million. Who's riding with me? Oh, y'all church people are just money hungry. Yo, shame on you. You church people just money hungry. Bible tells me that money answers all problems. But now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So that means that, that, that when I start, I'm, 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 I'm hoping for something, right? So, 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 so uh, give me a scenario, somebody. Come on, let's work with something. Give me a scenario, anything. What are you hoping for? Range Rover. So you're hoping for it. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Because, because we got to deal with something first. The Bible says that when you ask, sometimes you ask amiss according to your lust. What is the Range Rover for? Okay, so you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. Huh? The job. Okay, huh? Your job, okay. So, 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 so. Listen, the Bible says if a man don't doesn't work, he doesn't eat, right? The Bible says that if a man is stealing, let him steal no more and get a job, right? And so, and so, the Bible says the Bible says evidently that it's good for a man to work. And if a man doesn't work, how am I supposed to eat, right? So now I'm sitting at home, knowing it's the will of God that the Bible says that life is 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 eating and drinking and be merry, right? So I can't feed myself, I can't pay, I can't pay any tithes, I can't give offerings, I can't bless nobody else with with the fruit of 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 my increase. I can't do anything that the Bible tells me to do because I don't have a job, right? So now I'm sitting at home and I'm wishing for a job, but am I, am I making a job out of getting a job? See, a lot of us don't make a job out of getting a job, and so and because we don't believe. We I filled the application online and then I prayed, Pastor. Did you knock on the door? See, see, let me tell you something. When I was working in that factory making eight dollars an hour after I came off the street, that wasn't enough to feed a family of seven. Right? When I applied for the job at the car lot, before I ever applied, I walked in the door with my suit. The man said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here for my job. They started looking around the room like, what do you mean you're here for your job? I said, I'm, I'm here for my job. So he went over to the boss, and he started whispering. The boss looked back from behind. I saw him say, oh. And the man come back out and said, we're not hiring. And I said, you're not hiring. You don't need a salesperson? He said, no, we, we're a small dealership. We don't need one right now. I said, okay. Okay, so I went out and stood on the curb, and I said, well, Lord, I heard you say car lot. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> what, what am I going to do now? So, so, so next thing you know, I'm applying for a job. 45 minutes away, we got one car. We got one car. I said, Teresa, I, I, I don't think I can work down there because we only got one car. She said, just go, baby. Just go. We'll work it out. I pulled up to the lot. I walked up on the lot. The man said, we, how can we help you? You need a car? I said, no, I'm, I'm here looking for my job. I started, I applied for the job. Once I applied for the job, because of my background, they started telling me, we don't hire your kind. We don't hire your kind. You felons. We don't hire people with your kind of past. Don't you know that you're not supposed to carry beyond the cross what your life had produced before? Didn't I just tell you that? So, so other people will want you to carry beyond the cross. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. Other people will want you to carry beyond the cross what had happened in your past. 
There's a younger you that if he would have known what he knows now, he would have never did what he did. But because he did not know, right? Because he did not know, he did some things that he was never supposed to do. But once I got to the cross, there's some rules and policy changes that have to happen. There's some rules and policy changes that have to happen. See, see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but, the, but it's also the evidence of things not seen, right? So, so, so check this out. I get off the phone with the man, and he tells me, we don't hire your con. Check this out. I got man telling me we don't hire your con. I hang up the phone. I go back to work in this greasy, dirty factory making $8 an hour with seven mouths, including my own, right? To feed and God said didn't I tell you that you were more than a conqueror yes. Yes. now now you got to know whose report you're going to believe yes. you got to know whose report you're going to believe are you going to believe the report of the world or are you going to believe the report of God yes. see see listen listen I called the job but God called me yes. come on See, see, hope comes before the evidence of things not seen. So, so check this out. When God told me that, I put my one black suit on that I had. I only had one suit at the time. I put that black suit back on, and I went down to the job. And the, man, and the manager said, buddy, what are you doing here? It's Friday night. It's busy. What do you want? I said, I'm here for my job. He said, I told you I was going to hire you. But the other man's telling me we don't hire you. The one who does the hiring is telling me, I said, well, he said he's not going to hire me. He said, don't listen to him. Listen to me. Right? I said, but you told me that. He said, listen, go home. I'm busy. This, I, now, now, this boss, this boss, let me tell you how this boss would act. I found this out later. You'd come in, give me a hard time as a salesperson. I'd go get him. He'd sit down and say, how you doing? Here's the price you want to pay it? No, get out. Have a nice day. Just like that. He tell you, get out. I said, Dag, I ain't got another shot to sell that guy a car. I can't even call him back next week. Where Rico at? Rico, car sale. We, we want another shot. He told you, get out. So when he told me to go home, I was thinking, man, I'm not getting this job. I'm not getting this job at all. But, 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 but I believe God. See, you got to believe God. See, a lot of us stay in hope and we fail and we faint because there's not, there's not a faith attached to our hope. Go, go back one slide, Wayne. Come on. Look, it says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Do I have to see it in my hand to believe it? The only place I have to see it is in the capacity of my soul. My mind, my will, my intellect, my imagination, and my heart has to be able to obtain that which God has slated for me because if I don't believe it there, I'll never see it in my hands. We have to believe it first before we see it. That's why the Bible says that when I pray, when I get up, I got to believe that I received already. Because if I don't believe that I received already, I'll never see it. I'll be, I might remember the old mall, y'all, with the, uh, I said, yo, I meant to say y'all. <laughs> don't you know there's some things that never was supposed to go beyond the cross? <laughs> Miss Bessie, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Come on, y'all got guests. Put your shoes on and stuff. You got guests in the house. Remember the old mall with the penny, the penny, the, the wishing well? Some of y'all not from here. Y'all don't know. But the old mall, used to, in the middle of the mall, when you come in the front door, there used to be a, a, a wishing well there, pennies. And when I was a little kid, I used to say, Mommy, give me some, some change so I can throw in the wishing well. Y'all always had to throw pennies in the wishing well. Always throw. Some of us operate like that with Christ. We still throwing pennies in the wishing well, and we not believe in God. I'd run down the mall, give me some more change. I don't know what was so happy. I, I don't know. What will a wish ever get you? Because what wishing has always done was give you a picture of better that you can never achieve. That's what wishing has always done. We've always wished. I hope. Lord, please. 
instead of Lord thank you the conviction of the reality next slide come on one more one more oh I got time praise the Lord faith in what we do not see the fundamental fact this is the message Bible the fundamental fact of existence is that this is trust in God this is this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living it's our handle on what we cannot see so, so check this out so check this out some Christians feel like life is not worth living anymore but 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 if if you operate by faith if you operate by faith and not by feeling or not by what the world dictates because the world will dictate some things to you right and you'll operate based on labels that the world has given you because see the world has given me listen the world has given me three time felon right based on my actions three times been to prison once but I got three felonies right no I didn't snitch no 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 never went to jail but I went to prison once I ain't a snitch don't you know some things ain't supposed to go beyond the cross the fundamental fact of existence is that this is trusted God this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes work life worth living if I live based on what I accomplished before then why should I even try to ever accomplish anything now in Christ Jesus see see it's this faith it's this faith that we have that motivates us every single day to be better than we were before and if it's not better than where we were before, why are we, why are we settling for complacency instead of achieving more in Christ Jesus? What is it about us that refuses to leave hope and step into faith? What is it? What is it? And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's because you don't see. You lack vision. Not all of you. Not everyone. In general talking in general the body of Christ the reason why we don't manifest things is because we lack vision church gives us goosebumps but it doesn't make faith I can say a whole bunch of things that make you say mm, oh that was good but until there's a there, until there's a corresponding response to it life will never change you'll sit under the word you'll hear the word but because you won't respond to the word nothing changes come on give me the next slide what human faith versus Bible faith we must understand that there are numbers of kinds of faith for example everyone has a natural human faith whether they are saved or unsaved but in Hebrews 11 1 God is talking about a scriptural faith a Bible faith Bible faith is believing with your heart see you got to see with that soul man you got to see with that soul because if you don't see with your soul, you're never going to see with your hands. You'll never see with your hands. See, listen, the atheist believes that there was a big bang, but they weren't there. They believe the scientists. They got to be, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in faith. Yeah, you do. You believe everything the scientist tells you. Why? Because they proved it. No, it's all theory. They never been in a black hole. And tell you what, what happens when you come through the other end of that thing. But an atheist has faith. But, but, but scriptural faith is an antithesis, antithesis to their reasoning. It's a, combating, it's a combating thing that combats against their reasoning, fights against their reasoning, and because it fights against their reasoning, even though that the Bible says in Romans 1.20, said, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Even though that they can look out to creation and see that the finger of God has created everything, all they have to do is look at their eyes, all they have to do is look at their system and see how organized their human system is right all they have to do is look at the animals and understand that animals had to be designed everything had to be designed but because of these things they operate by human faith instead of scriptural faith you got to ask yourself how am I operating in this world am I operating based on what I see with my eyes or what I see with my heart because let me tell you something. If you see God with your heart, right? The Bible says those who are pure heart will see God, right? 
And so now, and so now, listen, when Nicodemus, when Nicodemus went to Jesus, right? When Nicodemus went to Jesus, he said, I can tell that you're a man that has come from God. Jesus said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, but you got to be born again, right? And Nicodemus said, how can a man go up into his mother's womb? He, he, he was trying to understand. Jesus said, listen, don't try to figure it out. Just believe it. He said, you don't know where the wind goes. You don't know how the bones grow in a mother's womb. I just need you to operate by this thing that I'm telling you. See, 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 Nicodemus had the gospel preached to him. He said, listen, you got to understand that I'm the life, the resurrection, right? That, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm coming to you telling you how you should operate in life. Jesus, we all know something about Jesus. Jesus is telling us how we should operate in life. But because we believe what we see more than what we hear, we don't operate the way God tells us to operate. Come on, come on. Give me the next slide. Wake up, Wayne. Next slide. Next slide. Get out of there. Keep going. It's too much. So we raised the bar. We raised the bar. Where are you going? We believe, we act, and we receive. Now, now, now check this out. That almost makes me. That almost makes me feel like I'm working for something, don't it? We believe, we act, then we receive right no 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 we act on the word of god right so 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 now when i'm hoping for something listen you need to find the corresponding hope in the bible is your range rover in the bible no not for what you want it for right not for what you want it for so so now i have to now is my job in the bible yes it is so, 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 so someone come to me a couple weeks ago and said, Pastor, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. I, I've prayed. I still don't have a job. I've went and looked, but I still don't have a job. I said, okay, you did all that yesterday. Now I need you to get up today and believe that you have a job. Yeah. See, 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 we believe we act on what we know, not acting as in if I do, God will. We act on according to what the word of God says. We respond quickly by faith, right? So now as we respond quickly by faith, now we receive that which we've hoped for because faith puts substance to hope. See, hope has no substance unless faith is accompanied with, with hope. Come on, next slide. Come on. Give me, give me, give me uh, Romans 10. Real quick, so I can get out of here. So then faith come up by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Listen, listen. It is vitally important for the preached word of the gospel to be, listen, disseminated to you. It, 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 listen, the Bible says that the sower soweth, right? So, so as me being sower, I'm sowing the word of God seed into your life, right? Some of this seed is going to fall by the wayside. Some of this seed is going to fall on stony ground. Some of this seed is going to fall among the thorns. But some of this seed is going to fall on good earth. And some of y'all are going to increase some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. But how, how the ground of your heart receives the word of God will base, be the basis of your increase in your understanding, the increase in your spirituality, and the increase in your life. If you do not respond to the preached word of God, listen, do you think, listen, do you think before we go on, do you think that I teach you correctly? Right. So if I teach you correctly, you must respond to the word of God that is being taught. Because if you don't respond to the word of God that's being taught, then this faith that you think that you have is being idle. It's idle. It's not moving for the simple fact that you're not believing exactly what. See, listen, you might say, I do believe, Pastor. I do believe. But where's the action? And then the next thing, well, you know, God ain't through with me yet. <laughs> yet. We ain't through with me either. What has he ever done? We're going to be with him until eternity. I can guarantee, listen, if there's a school in heaven, guess what Jamal is going to be? He says, listen, I'm going to teach you how to operate in this light, son. I said, okay, listen, what are you going to let me do? I'm going to be able to teach you to go from one aspect of, of, of eternity to another just by appearing. Oh, you're going to teach me that, Lord? Show me how to do it. I want to know it all. 
You can look at my imagination. I got a deep imagination. I can write movies. Do you know that? You think I can write movies? You believe I can? You believe that I can write movies? Why do you believe I can? Why do you believe I can write movies? Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm the conduit that God used to make a, uh, 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 what'd you say? A true story? A true story? You live by the truth. I learned from you, so yes. No, praise the Lord. Next slide. Okay. I got two more scriptures and I'm gonna let y'all go. This is Mark 4. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Somebody say, take heed to what you hear. Say, take heed to what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. No, you don't have to say that part. No, don't roll with me on that. Listen, listen, listen to this. The word of God goes forth. You know it to be true. You know it to be true. You're going to walk out this door. Listen to me, y'all. You're going to walk out this door. Do not forget about what you learned today. You must respond quickly. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet it, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Listen, you want some increase in your life? You got to operate by the word of God that has been given to you. If you do not operate by the word of God, you have nothing to complain about. You have nothing to complain about if you do not operate from the... Listen, listen, I can almost hear God say, don't come complaining to me when I've given you all the tools for life. I've been giving you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Don't come complaining to me when I've given you everything. Come on, one more slide. Check this out. No, 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 keep going. No, keep going. I put so much in there, man. Keep going. You can see I study, don't y'all? See I study? Keep going. There we go. You got to study. You got to read. You got to learn. You got to know, right? It says that Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So let me tell you about Samaria. Samaria was a place that Jews didn't go, right? It was, a, it, was a, it was a place that Jews didn't go because Jews considered Sumerians half-breeds. And so because they were considered half-breeds, they were considered less of a people, right? But, 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 but Jesus said, but Jesus said that I feel needs to go down into Samaria, right? So this is after Jesus' death. So if Jesus knew that everyone is important, so did Philip, amen? See, listen, listen, a lot of times we equate life and our positions in life, and our titles of life, and our conditions of life, that God's not going to do certain things for me, right? And, and, and listen, there are millions of people outside the church that think they have to get themselves together first before they come here. And so how you exhibit yourself in front of them really matters. Because if you get snooty in front of people that you think are ungodly, you'll, you'll push the people farther away than bringing them close to God that, as, as they should be, right? So, so when Philip went down to Samaria and he did what? He preached Christ unto them, right? So Philip preached the gospel unto these people. He says, and the people with one accord, what did they do? They gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing miracles what he did. The last scripture said, take heed to what you hear, with what measure you meet it, right? With what measure you meet it will be given back to you, right? Look at this next slide. Come on, next slide. Look, look what happened, because they took heed. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palaces, and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. So let me tell you something. There's deliverance in your faith. Listen, 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 listen. You think there's deliverance in my mouth. Pastor, please lay hands and pray on me. I can lay hands and pray on you all day long. I can labor over you and tell you, speak in tongues. Say tamata, tamata, tamata. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Try to say tamata, tamata. But if you do not believe, it's not going to take place. Deliverance is in your faith. Listen, the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood, 
that she said, the, the Bible says she heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. And she said, if I touch his garment, it wasn't, it wasn't somebody saying, saying, come on, baby. Come on, time to Work a little harder. Believe a little harder. Do a little bit more. It has nothing to do with that. Deliverance, listen, those things that are ailing you, listen, your faith will drive them out. The, the devil will cry by your faith. See, see, because we want retribution, right? We want all back what the devil stole. Listen, this is the things that you hear in church, right? So then you begin to pray more. You begin to do more. You begin to give more. You begin to cry out more. You labor and wail at altars. But God says, listen, that little old woman that's sitting in the back of the church that ain't saying nothing, that believes God for everything that comes, she operates by this great joy. She knows that she knows that she knows. And because she knows that she knows that she knows, she doesn't go through any of these things. Listen, it says many were taken with illnesses and were lamed, but they were healed. Listen, we don't get healed by what we do. We get healed by what we believe in. Listen, the Bible says that by his stripes, you were healed. Listen, your salvation brought everything that you ever need, all the healing that you ever need, all the manifestations that you ever need. All you have to do is believe God, and it'll show up in your hand, and then you'll see the equivalent joy show up in your life. Come on, give God praise.